Was there anything else, or could we start the show there? Uh, unless you have anything else like that you wanted to do, we could start the show whenever. No, no, we'll talk about the Silver Standard stuff in between the shows. How about that? That's fine. I And to, be, to tell you the truth, I didn't have much time to think about that either. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I'm sorry, this has been just a few Listen, days. I understand. You got to take care of business. You got to take care of the family. You got to take care of whatever you got to take care of. Silver Standard comes first. Um, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, that's that's it. If we if I was to rank the hierarchy of things in the main show, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Silver Standard somewhere toward the m- top of the bottom of the middle. Yeah, it's no, I don't want to say the middle because that might be giving a little bit too much credence. <laughs> right, but it's definitely the top of the bottom. Oh, good. Doesn't top from the bottom, does it? No, that's a different podcast. Right. I was uh, introducing my dad. Uh, I don't even remember how it came up over Sunday night dinner this past week. Right. Um, but I was introducing my dad into the film Cruisin'. Are you aware of the film Cruisin', Todd? Was that, uh, was that, who was in that? Al Pacino. Okay. Uh, he is a, a police, it's from the early 80s, like late 70s. It's it's when the 80s was still the 70s is how early 80s it was, right? <laughs> right, okay. So uh, Al Pacino's a cop and someone is killing people in Central Park, but specifically they're killing the people that go uh, into Central Park to have anonymous gay sex. Oh, okay. So, so Al so this isn't about a 50s driving around movie. No. Okay. Uh, so Al Pacino goes undercover into that world. Oh, good for him. And there's like a whole thing of him trying to root out who the killer is. But then also as he gets deeper into that world. And again, you have to bear in mind, this is late 70s, early 80s. It's New York when New York was New York. And there's like a whole subplot and subtext of like maybe he's starting to like enjoy that lifestyle as he gets deeper into it, you know? I, he's a method actor too. Yeah. We April and I watched that on Netflix like years and years ago. And I'm like, like I'm like, this is an Al Pacino movie from the eighties? And like, how does like nobody talk about this movie all the time? It's really <laughs> good. Um, but the way that it came up was my dad had made a um a thing up about the hanky code and i always forget how far back the hanky code goes you know with harper's hanky and all that jazz yeah it goes all the way back to medieval times i think no i don't know (laughs) but no he was just telling me that uh he would he and his buddies would go to atlantic city in like the early 70s and there would be like gay and lesbian clubs there and they would just have it posted in the front window you know the code yeah Oh, fantastic. Right, and I'm like, that's crazy, you know? Like, I remember discovering it, like, one of the first things that I fu- saw on the internet, uh, getting the internet not at school, right. like, I... like, 94, mm-hmm. and it was the hanky code, and it was Kenny Fister's website. Let's just say Kenny Fister doesn't have a website anymore. Shocking. Um, but see, I had heard about, obviously, because I'm a little older than you, I heard about hanky code on the street where every good kid should learn about it. Okay. Now, um, but now you didn't have a definitive site, so, like, I couldn't tell you what the, the colors meant. But you know what I mean? Like, growing up, whether the colors were right or wrong, I knew of said hanky code. Sure. So that's all I really know. I mean, growing up in the, you know, I don't know how, with the earliest I would have heard about it, but it was definitely the, the mid-'80s. Yeah, the mean and, streets of Dixon. Yep, and there was no... uh there was no internet in the mid eighties. So. Yeah, that's true. Right. Uh, yeah. So I so you mentioned in dinner. Of course, we talked about it last week on one of the shows um, about all the foods that disagree with us. You know, I eat poorly, right? Oh, not me. I eat like a you know an athlete. Right. Right. Uh, I can see some dietary changes coming in my near future. Not today. Mm-hmm. Um, yesterday, yesterday, as we record this, was a good <laughs> was a good sit in your room alone, <laughs> eat KFC, and have a cry day. Oh my goodness! I'll just throw that or, out there, or as I call it, every day. Joe. Well, there's some days where I there's some days where I sit in the room alone and eat KFC. <laughs> a lot of the days I'm not crying while I do it. 
<laughs> right? See, me, I cry every day. I just change the food. That's oh, the difference, gotcha. you know? Gotcha. Today's a crying in my room eating the pizza with the onions. Dish. Yes. So, I need to do that again. But anyway. So um, I have – I, I like, so the last, like, three times, maybe four times that I got uh, Burger King – I got like real sick afterwards, right? And I I try to like narrow it down. I'm like, oh well, you know, is it this that I ordered? No, it's not that. And sadly, I think it's whatever they fry their anything fried in. Right. Because the last time all I got was the long boy chick the the OG chicken sandwich, the long boy. And a thing of onion rings, and that's all I got. And I had that, and it was just like, oh my god! Like I was like violently ill for like two days afterwards. Maybe they're maybe they're cooking it in Olestra. Remember Olestra? Yes, I do remember Olestra. It was Olestra, aka the Ass Cannon. Yes, cannot be the show title, unfortunately. Oh, good. I was worried. And the only other thing that I could think of off the top of my head that really, uh, you know, figuratively and literally knocks it out of me is uh, Alfredo sauce. Okay. Yeah. And, like, yep. I, had, I had to put, like, a moratorium on it, like, going to my dad's house to eat, getting stuff prepared here, you know, anytime that we go out anywhere. And it's, like, even, like, slightly Italian. I'm like, is there Alfredo sauce in this? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay. Or yes. Uh, and I can't, can't get it. can't have any Alfredo sauce or I'll cry, literally. No, no. Well, yeah. It won't, it's crying of a different kind. Right. It won't be out of my eyes. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah. My, I think my big thing is anything greasy or oily at this point. Just does me in. Really? Yeah. That or if I eat too much. Well. No, but I don't mean too much like, oh, I sat down and ate two pizzas. You know what I mean? Like, there was a time we were joking on Twitter this week about a pizza eating contest. Yeah. Soon to be named Network. And in my day, Joe, in my day, I would kill any of you. Any of you. I stand by that. I don't have many things I could, you know, if they had a belt for, like, eating food, I would be able to, like, be the champion. But, uh, like, now it's like, oh, I had six slices of a thin pizza and i and i but it just kills me it just it's like oh my god um but like super something greasy oily like uh i had uh uh, mozzarella sticks the other day and i made the mistake of having two uh hot dogs with fried onions afterwards there you go and i was like yep i'm just Let's just say, let's just use the word. I was slippery after that joke. Oof. Um, so. so I'm still okay with re- you know general fried food. You know, like I went and got Arby's today. Had the curly fries. I'm okay. <laughs> um, I did, like I you know I've gotten McDonald's where I'll get like the ten piece nugget and the, a thing of fries. I'm okay, no problems. And it was just like Burger King, like four times in a row like i think it's just something the way that they prepare it and it was two different burger kings just like so it's not even like just my local burger king it was the burger king uh on the turnpike as well on the way home from the uh last lvac show i think you were just sick from watching wrestling no 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 goodness now i will say this i think there is uh, some sort of cream stuff as well that I'm starting. Like, I wouldn't say that I'm lactose intolerant by any stretch of the imagination. Like, I had ice cream yesterday. Like, I didn't get, like, my usual, which would be, like, a giant milkshake or whatever. Like, I got, like, two scoops in a cup, you know? Right. And I'm eating it. I'm fine. Um, I went to, last time we went to Knobles. On our way there, we stopped at, um... Dunkin' Donuts, and I got a frozen coffee. And I drink coffee all day. Like, I'm good for, like, uh, like eight cups of coffee a day, you know? Addict, you. Uh, listen, I have a problem. It's, you know... Uh, so I'm good for, like, you know, let's say seven, eight cups. Maybe I'm exaggerating just a bit, you know? Like, whatever they constitute a cup of coffee. Like, the little, like, four, you know, when you go to a diner, like, that's a cup. It's on the right. side of, like, your thing, you know? Well, you're getting, like, the tub of coffee at the Yeah, well, I got my giant Yeti tumbler that fits, like, four of those, right? And I polish off two a day. You do your gazintas and, say, eight cups, right? 
Um, so I got like a frozen coffee there. Mm-hmm. And typically when I ordered, I just do like frozen coffee off the off the menu, right? Like it's just like frozen coffee, nothing added, nothing extra, right? And when I did the order, they said, Oh, do you want like cream or sweetener in there? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, however it normally comes, right? So when I got it, it had like this like weird white swirl in it, you know? Right. And I drank that, and boy, howdy, whatever that white swirl was, <laughs> yeah, it, that's... it tore me apart. <laughs> right. So I don't know, you know? Like, yeah. it wasn't the coffee, it was whatever they added into the coffee. Right, where you have eight cups of coffee a day, I have uh, eight glasses of gravy a day. So. <laughs> there you go. We, didn't we make that joke at the shop last week? <laughs> yeah, that's why as soon as you said I had eight cups of coffee, I'm like, oh, let me put this one in the chamber. Yeah, and the, your doctor tells you to drink it. You got to do it. You know that's right. Yeah, but yeah, I can't. That's coffee. No, that was never my thing. Now, am I addicted to Diet Pepsi? Mm-hmm. Yes. And what's that? As aspartame? Is that what? The aspartame. Thing is? Yes. Aspartame. That's going to give me my stroke. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, listen. We could split the hairs here on Coke or Pepsi and who's right and who's wrong, but that's another another thing for another day. You know, that's for our other podcast, Cheap Pops. You know? yeah. oh. Pe- a, a diet Pepsi is good if you want something brown and flavorless. I'll have the crab juice, please. Yeah. I'm um, just trying to think if there's anything else really. Um, like I know, um, like I I haven't like I don't get a chance to eat seafood quite a bit. Um, cause April doesn't like it. Asa doesn't like it, but I I've learned my lesson many a times with your lobster and your crab bisques. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, they're delicious, but, uh, I'll tell you, you know, the, 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 the 10 minutes of eating a delicious soup are not worth like, you know, the hours that you spend, uh, in pain from that delicious soup. Right. I'm, I do like my seafood recently. Do you remember where? Like the Grande uh, in Music, where we went to a couple of times, like for my birthday, the one time. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have like they have a Stromboli there that I love. But I recently found out that Wednesday is their clam night too. No. So I went. Oh, Joe, that's that. Uh, that's my superpower. I could eat clams by the dozen. Um, and I went up and I had like three dozen clams and had a Stromboli a few weeks ago. And I think that you know. And that might be the end of my days of doing that, you know? <laughs> well, you, and again, you said when you eat too much. Yes. And well, that, there, there are days where, I, like, if I, I'm I'm good. You said uh, your days of eating, like, the two pizzas is <laughs> over, right? Right. So I'm not going to say two pizzas, but if I don't got a time limit, like, and I'm not saying, like, oh, I could eat a pizza in seven days, right? Mm-hmm. But if I could eat, like, a pizza, like a tray of pizza over the course of, like, a four- or five-hour period, mm-hmm. I could do that, right? I could eat a whole tray in a four- or five-minute period. Okay. Right. So I- I'm not looking for speed. I'm looking for, you know, because, like, sometimes I'll graze throughout the course of a day. <laughs> Right. Like, we'll have something going on where, like, oh, I wake up late on a Sunday, so I'm having a bowl of cereal at, like, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, then I got my eight cups of coffee, then I go to my barbecue place at around 2, and that's kind of sort of lunch, right? <laughs> right. And then we go, and then, like, if it lines up that, like, oh, it's, like, one of the nep- nieces and nephews' birthday parties, and we're going to go to my dad's. Like, in my mind, I'm just like, oh, I'm just casually eating a little bit here and there. But, like, my little bit is a lot different than most people's little <laughs> bit, you know? Right, you're no bird. Right. And then at the end of the night when I'm trying to sleep and I can't roll over onto my stomach for fear <laughs> of exploding. <laughs> right. Right. Can't have just one more wafer-thin mint joke. No, no. It's like, no, I'll take another piece of cake. That's fine. Just don't give me the end piece that has the lot of icing on it. Oh, Just that's, more... yeah, I can't have that at the end of the night. But right, you know? Yeah, I always say, Joe, if you are what you eat, then I'm too much, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> What's the, <laughs> the Rodney Dangerfield joke from the Thornton Melon 
fucking. <laughs> do you when you go to a restaurant? Do you look at the menu and go, okay? <laughs> That's such, a, like, such a subtle joke, like, and as a kid watching that movie, right? Like, right. so much other shit in that movie that's funny, but, like, right now, today, to me, that's the funniest thing in that movie. <laughs> yeah, I do that all the time. And then what's the other one? When you hit white, stop. It's, like, on the plate. Oh, that's so good. But I do that, like, when, I, I do that all the time. When you look at a menu, do you get, say, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good movie. Hey, you're tall and fat. Yeah, well, you're short and ugly. So, <laughs> no, but the the day is coming here shortly. Um, you know where I got to figure something out, and that's what we'll do. We'll go. We'll we'll do it. We'll be you know, we'll be buddies. We'll go through it together. But yeah, I don't know if we'll both fit. We'll have to go one at a time. I think. But before we do that, we have to have one one last goodbye binge. Yes, we do. Because before you try anything to get healthier diet, you have to, like, set yourself back by going crazy for a week. Yeah. yeah. You got to go, like, oh, I haven't had, I'll have to have this pizza one last time before I do it. Then I'll have to have this junk food one last time before I do it. Yeah, it's just, I, like, I know me, and I know it has to be, like, something gradual. You know what I mean? I can't say, like, tomorrow I'm changing my entire eating habits. Because then a week later, I'll be like, this sucks, and I'm going back to something else, you know? Right, you come back hard, man. Yeah, I just got to slowly start eliminating stuff. and Yeah. I need a plan is what it is, you know? I'm eliminating vegan food first. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the first to go. Well, don't come to the LVAC show on October 21st, you know? How does uh, your boy feel about Garrity's getting sold to a different from, from different people? No, I don't know. He didn't mention that. He you was know, trying tell, to... You tell your boy that Garrity's is no longer run by the family that owned it, and they've already, like, doubled the prices, so look out. That means the quality will be slipping soon, Joe. That's all. That's all I got. That made me think of that when you. I'm going to ask him now. Oh, no. Tell him I said hi. I know he misses me. I will. And <laughs> Todd says hi. Who the fuck is Todd? Yeah. Uh, so uh, c- close this out. Could we talk about me getting banned off Twitter? Oh, yes, please do, because. I was just going to see if I could find a way to get you another sentence, but go ahead. Uh, So I discussed this on, um, you know, at odds with wrestling, but I assume nobody, you know, not everyone listens to everything that I'm on. So if you've heard the story, you know, it is what it is. Um, So as young Ed of Pod Van Dam was preparing for his furry convention this past weekend. Okay. Uh, he, he does a wrestling panel at the furry convention and it's just his way of like tricking unsuspecting other furries into watching like weird sex stuff that happened in wrestling. Mm -hmm. So he was pitching the idea that he was going to go up there and do Phil from Chicago's whole rant from the AEW pay-per-view press conference from a week and a half ago. Right. Right. He was going to go up there and do that verbatim. And we're all chiming in and making jokes, and like this person's like, "Oh, do this," and this person is this, and I say, "Oh, well, you have to dress like a cat girl and do it." This, this, and then I say, to really seal the deal, you should injure yourself to or from the panel for authenticity, or words How to that effect. Right? Dare you <laughs> threaten that person with harm? How right. dare you? So uh, the Twitter algorithm immediately kicks that back, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's the words injure and yourself together. They think that I'm telling someone to go commit suicide. Right. Okay. Uh, so it says I can delete the tweet. And by deleting the tweet, I'm admitting what I did was violating Twitter's rules of terms of service. Mm -hmm. Or I could submit an appeal. Now I will put this here as a caveat Twitter went ahead and deleted the tweet for me, so I couldn't delete the tweet at that moment. Right. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'll put an appeal through, and I wrote up what I just said, right? Why do I feel <laughs> Joe Sposto over-explained 
what he was what he was doing. Uh-huh. I, I don't know why, but I I feel you put your extra special Joe twist on it. No, I would. I okay. So I I was explaining this to someone who may not know Ed and may not know what Colossal Connie is and may not know who CM Punk is and may That's not know I his. Li- you were going deep. You're like, I didn't want there. I'm like, I didn't want to say. I was just joking with my friend, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like my friend Ed, who is doing a panel about professional wrestling at Colossal Con, which is a furry convention, and he is a fan of CM Punk who recently had a meltdown and he's injury prone. Here's a list of his recent injuries doing mundane things outside of wrestling. And that's where the joke came from, right? Right. Did you say the person who does the best sharpshooter in the world, Sam? I, no, uh, that's how there's, he doesn't, I, mean, I don't think that's him, but anyway. Okay. It so is a sharpshooter I, he messed up, right? No, it was a uh, figure four leg. Oh, I messed it up. But anyway, go ahead. You tried. I tried. So uh, I see when other people get banned from Twitter, they, uh, they're they gone for like 24 hours. So 24 hours comes and goes, and my thing's still banned. I'm like, oh, what the fuck, right? So I start like looking up how long an appeal usually takes. Mm-hmm. And they said that an appeal could take anywhere from six days to many weeks oh. for them to review. So I go, you know what? Fuck this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, reopen the, like, I'm going to cancel my appeal that reopens the tweet. And I'm going to just say, yeah, I was, I, I broke your terms of service. I was trying to tell my friend Ed to go kill himself. Right. Strike one. Right. I'll take my first strike after being on Twitter for 13 years or however the fuck long I've been on Twitter. Right. Right. You only get one at other. You only get two strikes on Twitter anymore. Oh, you do? I don't even know how many strikes you get. I don't know. I just, I'm joking, but, um, so, caveat uh, to that, I just got my reply today, Tuesday, from my canceled appeal mm-hmm. to Twitter. So, it was just like, oh, the appeal that you sent to Twitter has been reviewed. Click on the results here. So, I clicked on the results, but because I canceled the like the way their algorithm works, like my appeal was in the system, it was reviewed, but because I canceled my appeal, I can't review what the outcome of my appeal was now you'll never know you'll die like thinking about it no no it was like it was like one of those things where it's like drainage Uh, i have moved on from that um anyway um yeah yeah no i just know i i just know better and i'm gonna have that as my pin tweet as a constant reminder to myself and others not to make jokes with your friends on social media right I'm looking for your answer when you came back, because uh, you had a, a great tweet right when you came back. Do you remember it? No, I don't. Yeah, what day were you banished from all? Would have been th- Thursday. Okay, so I'm trying to remember, you came back with a with a uh, quote tweet where you were like, "I'm back." After all this, and oh yeah, that's my pin tweet. Sure. Oh, that's your pin tweet. That's why I can't find it. I'm all the way down at the bottom. I was looking back for it, but you come back with the tweet. So even though Twitter Sport deleted deleted my tweet for me, unless I admit to violating their terms, blah blah blah, my appeal would take into eight to twelve days. Fuck you, Twitter. Racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia runs rampant on this site, and nothing gets done. I thought about for a half a second. Reporting that tweet to Twitter. Oh, just oh, come on. Just because it's got "fuck you" in it, and be like, "See you go down again." I didn't do it because I'm a better man than that. But I'll admit, I was like, "How fucking pissed would he be if he went down for this tweet?" But I couldn't do it to my good man uh, Joe Sposto because if you don't have the ability to get all your thoughts out about wrestling. On Twitter, you might do it on my show. So, good luck on Twitter, Joe. I'm sure I like that. I'm going to behave this time. Then there's that. So, did uh, he get back to you? No, he's probably gone to bed. He's an old man. Right. He's probably suffering from the vegan food that he ate. So I think that's good, right? That's everything, yes. 
Uh, yeah, I would certainly say so. So, hey, everyone, uh, thanks for listening. This was, I have people bothering me while I'm trying to do the show. Uh, I this was episode four. You. What? You played it off well. There was no way I could tell that you were being bothered during the show. Uh, this is episode 409 of Longbox Heroes After Dark. Mm. Uh, patreon.com slash Longbox Heroes. Amazon affiliate link at longboxheroes.com. T Public Store sale is on this weekend, 35% off. Uh, tell a friend. Uh, iTunes reviews are a lie. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Thanks for listening. See everyone next week. You're listening to the soon to be named network, the Lamborghini <laughs> of Podcast Networks. <laughs>